Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another week of what's for dinner. If you're new here, hello and welcome. I am Taylor. I share these what's for dinner videos every week to hopefully give you guys some motivation to cook more for your family and some meal ideas. This week's video is actually a collab with another awesome mom named Taylor. Her YouTube channel name is The Relentless Mommy. She's a mom of two and she shares what's for dinners, cleaning videos, grocery hauls, all kinds of stuff similar to what I post. So make sure you check out her link down below. And now let's go ahead and get into this week's what's for dinner. It is Friday and tonight for dinner we are having tuna casserole. I have shared this recipe many times so I'm just going to go through it real fast. I'm going to go through the ingredients and then I'll just speed through me making it. So I have cooked half a bag of egg noodles, so like eight ounces of egg noodles. And then we need salt and pepper, and I did cook that in salted water. I've got one can of cream of chicken soup. I've got two cans of tuna that I have drained. I've got milk. I'm gonna fill this can halfway with milk and pour that in there once I pour that in. And then I've got cheese. I usually just do cheddar. Um, this is white cheddar. I'm gonna use the rest of that. And then this is some extra sharp cheddar that's like chunked. I was having problems with it crumbling when I was trying to shred it. Like this was just not a good block of cheese. So I'm just gonna like crumble that some more into small chunks and put that in there as well. And that is it. It's gonna go in the oven on 350 for 20 to 30 minutes just so, until everything gets nice and bubbly. And here are our plates, mine, Andy's, Lily's, and Elijah's. And that is going to be dinner for Friday. It is Saturday and tonight for dinner we are having baked spaghetti or million dollar spaghetti, whatever you want to call it. I have shared this exact recipe before. Um, I didn't feel like pulling out the camera tonight and recording step by step, just was not in the mood. Um, but I will have the recipe for this linked down below. It is so delicious. Um, but most of the reason I made this is because Andy asked for spaghetti. Well, he asked for a million dollar spaghetti. Um, so I'm making it tonight. That way tomorrow he can have leftovers because tomorrow is Mother's Day and I want breakfast for dinner. He doesn't like breakfast for dinner, but that's what I want. So he'll be at work. I'm going to cook me and the kids breakfast for dinner and when Andy gets home he can heat up the leftovers of this. Works out perfectly. So to go with that we have like some salad stuff. This is Lily so of course no salad. Just cucumbers and carrots. And then this is Elijah's. His little salad. And this is mine. And my little salad. And we are using the best dressing in the world. But that is going to be dinner for Saturday. Hey guys, it is Sunday and today is Mother's Day and I am making breakfast for dinner. If you don't know, breakfast food is like my favorite food. Um, I could probably eat any breakfast food all day every day. It's hard for me to pick between breakfast and like Mexican food, but breakfast is, is pretty high up there. They're, they're like tied. So I'm having breakfast for dinner. If I have to make myself Mother's Day dinner because Andy works, then it's going to be something that I love and he hates. Um, but that's why I made spaghetti last night for dinner so that he could have leftovers of that. For dinner, I'm going to make French toast. French toast isn't something that I usually like. I'm not, I'm usually more of like the savory breakfast, not the sweet breakfast. But I have this loaf of bread that I made earlier in the week. I'm going to make French toast with that. And then I pulled out some ham from Easter and I'm going to make my usual hash brown casserole recipe. 
but add in some diced ham, so ham and hash brown casserole. And the recipe I use is essentially a copycat Cracker Barrel recipe, but I have this in this like family cookbook for my stepdad. Um, so it says Wesley's hash brown casserole. And for that you need two cups of shredded cheddar cheese. Um, freshly grated is best, it melts better, but use whatever you have. So I'm gonna use some of that, but I'm also gonna use up the rest of this white cheddar to get rid of it. One can of cream of chicken soup, one cup of sour cream, and like with the sour cream and stuff, I just kind of eyeball it. I'm not here measuring and dirtying measuring cups. I also do about half of a can, the cream of chicken can. I do a little bit of milk to make it a little bit thinner and easier to mix. And then you could do regular like chopped onion, but I'm not very fond of that. So I use onion powder instead. And then of course you'll need some salt and pepper and a fourth a cup of melted butter which is actually in the microwave. I have to go get that. And then of course your hash browns. Usually the recipes say like a 32 ounce or like two pound bag of hash browns, which is kind of hard to find. Um, usually they come in like 26 to 28 ounces, I feel like, and I always use that and it turns out great. It's probably a little bit creamier, which I kind of like. So I always use whatever this size is, 26 ounces from Walmart. And I know the one from Kroger and the one from Aldi, I think are all about the same. So I'm just going to mix everything together in this casserole dish. I think I'm going to do about a cup of the diced ham. And then this is going to bake. Most recipes say 350. I like to do it on 375 for about 45 minutes. I almost forgot to mention this is easiest to mix if your potatoes are completely thawed. So I took mine out of the freezer probably about an hour and a half ago. So they are nice and thawed, and it just makes it so much easier to mix. For the French toast, I don't measure anything whenever I make French toast, so I just kind of eyeball it. Um, I was making this whole loaf of bread, so I used five eggs. I probably should have used one more because I ended up having to leave out like two slices of the bread. So if I would have used six eggs for this whole loaf, I think it would have been perfect. And then I just poured in some milk and some cinnamon and some vanilla and whisked that all together. Then of course, you know, you dip your bread in the egg. And then I'm using my griddle that I got for Christmas. I love this thing. It's also a panini press. Um, I have it linked in my Amazon shop. Hopefully soon I will be getting the plates for it to make waffles as well so I can get rid of my waffle maker. But this thing is so awesome. It helps me save space because I don't have to have like some sort of like griddle and like I always wanted a panini press. Once I put the French toast on the griddle, usually I like to sprinkle on just a little bit more cinnamon. Okay, here is my plate. I've got French toast with some strawberries and powdered sugar on top and then our hash brown casserole. And then here are the kids' plates. They have a little bit of powdered sugar and a little bit of syrup on their French toast. But that is going to be our Mother's Day dinner. It is Monday and we are deviating from the meal plan tonight and having a grilled cheese and tomato soup. To be honest, I have been feeling like complete crap all day drank a little bit too much last night after the kids went to bed it was mother's day you know just just drank a little bit too much and woke up feeling extremely hungover this morning so that's always a good time but uh didn't really feel like 
cooking a whole meal. Griddle was still out. Lily suggested grilled cheese and tomato soup and we've always got the stuff for that. So that's what we are doing. Uh, of course, if you know, you know. If you've been here, this is Progresso Hearty Tomato Soup. It is the best canned tomato soup in our opinion. We absolutely love it. It has chunks of tomato in it. So we've got that heating up. And then I'm not doing like a traditional grilled cheese. I have a bagel. It's an onion bagel. These are Andy's favorite, the onion ones. I prefer an everything bagel, but this is what we have. So I've got an onion bagel with some extra sharp cheddar on it, and then I'm cooking an egg, and that's gonna go on there, mashed between them, it's gonna be delicious. And the kids just have some wheat bread with some American cheese and some cheddar cheese. And yeah, they're gonna each have a sandwich and a half with some soup. Uh, possibly some fruit or some vegetables or something on the side as well but I will show you our plates when we are done but always have to have the stuff for grilled cheese and tomato soup on hand because it makes a delicious quick dinner okay and here are our plates these are the kids with cucumbers there was no more cucumbers so I don't get any and then here is my plate with my egg on my bagel and that is going to be dinner for Monday for Tuesday night's dinner, we tried a recipe called red beans and rice with andouille sausage and bacon. This comes from my friend Jess over at Jess and the Boys. I will have her channel linked below. I did kind of modify this a little bit for what I thought would work better for our family. So for this recipe, you're going to need half of a pack of bacon, some andouille sausage, salt and pepper, minced garlic, oregano, parsley, cayenne pepper, celery salt, butter, drained dark red kidney beans, and rice and I like to rinse my rice. So I'm starting off by cooking the bacon and I'm gonna let it get kind of crispy and then I'm going to add in the andouille sausage and season that with some salt and pepper. Once that's nice and brown, I'm going to remove it from the pan and reserve two tablespoons of that bacon grease. And to that, I'm going to add one tablespoon of butter. And then my seasonings, my minced garlic, my oregano, my cayenne, celery salt, parsley, salt, and pepper. And there are no measurements to this. It's just like however much you like, you're gonna have to try it and play around with the seasonings. I'm gonna stir around those seasonings for just a little bit and then I'm going to add in the drained red kidney beans and let those heat up with that mixture. And then I'm going to add in my three and a half cups of water, two cups of rinsed rice, my meat, and then give that all a good stir and bring it to a boil. And then once it came to a boil, I simmered it with a lid for 15 to 20 minutes until my rice was tender. I ended up making a can of green beans to go with this red beans and rice and you guys this was really really good as i said you kind of have to play with the seasonings to get it to how you like it do you want more spice add more cayenne pepper i didn't add too much of the cayenne pepper because i wanted the kids to be able to eat it and the andouille sausage already has some kick to it so i didn't do too much of that but i added like lots of salt and pepper and garlic to give the rice and the beans some good flavor but we definitely liked this recipe and we'll make it again it is Wednesday and tonight for dinner we're going to be having some cheddar crusted chicken, which is my recipe, and some air fryer baked potatoes. So I'm going to get started on the potatoes first because they're probably going to take a little bit longer. These are smaller so they shouldn't take as long as like a bigger potato and I don't really need this many but this is the last of what was in a bag so I'm going to go ahead and cook them and we can have them for lunch tomorrow or whatever. I am going to poke some holes in them, that's why I've got my fork and put a little bit of olive oil on them, rub it around. I have already washed these and I dried them, that's why they're on this towel, because I wanted them dried completely before I put the oil on them. And then I'm gonna put them in my air fryer on 400 
and I'm going to check them at 10 minutes and flip them over and then they'll probably need like another 10 to 15 minutes. I'm thinking they'll be done in like 20 to 25 minutes. Okay, it's gonna be a little bit loud because I've got my air fryer going now. I do have an entire recipe video on this cheddar crusted chicken, but I kind of switch it up every time I make it depending on the ingredients I have on hand. In that video, I use some like cheese crackers as the like crunchiness. Most of the time I just use panko because panko is what I have on hand. You could do Cheez-Its, whatever you want. You just want to crush it up. And I don't really measure it. I do have measurements in that video, but I just kind of kind of eyeball it like half of a cup about of the breadcrumbs and then you can add whatever seasonings you want you definitely want to do salt and pepper but you could add some extra stuff as well I'm going to do just a touch of slap your mama today not don't want it to be too spicy but just want to give it a little something extra and then some cheese you could do cheddar Monterey Jack whatever kind of cheese you want to do and I probably do about half a cup of this as well half cup to a cup we like cheese and so I'm gonna get that all mixed together and then we will get it on the chicken Okay, this is my chicken. This is two chicken breasts. I slice it in half horizontally to make it thin. If you don't slice yours in half, it's gonna take longer to cook. I have my oven preheated at 425, and this will take like 15 to 20 minutes because it is sliced so thin. But if you have it thicker, it's probably gonna take 30 to 40 minutes if you just have a whole thick breast. So part of the reason I do it is because it. I feel like it extends further. We don't need to eat a whole breast ourselves. Um, and then also it cooks faster it saves time so that's why I do it that way I'm going to season the chicken on both sides with just some salt and pepper and then I'm going to put about a tablespoon of sour cream on each piece of chicken spread that out with my little brush and then I will press my little coating mixture into the sour cream potatoes actually took like 30 minutes in the air fryer so here is my plate I've got my potato and then some butter and cheddar cheese and bacon and sour cream on there and then I made some zucchini and I just fried it with a little bit of butter and oil and some badia and just a touch of the slap your mama so that's my plate and then Elijah doesn't like zucchini so he's got some salad with some Olive Garden and then Lily's pretty much looks the same as mine and if you haven't tried this cheddar crusted chicken recipe, I highly recommend it. We all love it. Even if you don't like sour cream, I think you will like it. Andy does not care for sour cream, but he absolutely loves this chicken. It really doesn't taste like sour cream. It just makes the chicken nice and juicy and delicious. So definitely recommend that. For Thursday night's dinner, I'm trying another recipe from Pressure Luck Cooking. This is his Instant Pot Beef and Broccoli. And I will have the recipe linked down below so you guys can get the measurements and everything. So to start off, I am placing the oil and the wine in the Instant Pot. 
and putting this on saute and on the high setting for saute and it says to heat this for three minutes but guys don't do what I did don't walk away from it and let it get too hot because I ended up with a mess of oil all over the place because I think three minutes like just letting it heat is a little bit too long at least with my instant pot it got hot real fast so then once it was hot and I let it cool back down for a second so that I didn't burn myself I added in my onion and scallions and cooked those for a few minutes and I was supposed to add in the garlic at this point too and forgot to so you'll see me later add the garlic And then I'm going to add in my beef. And for this, I used London broil. He recommended using a flank steak. And if I was to make this again, which I definitely will, um, I would definitely do the flank steak that he used. This was delicious, but the cut of steak that I used was just too tender. And so that was my only complaint that the meat just got too tender, but it was very, very delicious anyways. And then once the meat was kind of sauteed a little bit, then I added in my broth, my hoisin sauce, my soy sauce, my oyster sauce, and my brown sugar. And I stirred that until it was well combined. And then I put the lid on it and cooked this on high pressure manual for 10 minutes. And then when it was done, I allowed it to just do a natural release for 15 minutes. While this was cooking in the pressure cooker, I went ahead and steamed my broccoli in the microwave. I would recommend using two bags of frozen broccoli. I only used one bag, but definitely could have used some more broccoli. And then once everything was done in the pressure cooker and I did a quick release, I went ahead and hit that saute button again and got everything heated and like starting to bubble. And I stirred in some cornstarch mixed with water to thicken that sauce. We liked it really, really thick. So we did the four tablespoons of cornstarch and four tablespoons of water to get it really thick. To go with this, I just made my fried rice that I always make. I have shared that recipe many, many times. If you're ever looking for a recipe that I've made before, you can just like type in on YouTube Taylor Elmore and then whatever the name of that recipe was, like you type in Taylor Elmore fried rice and usually the video will pop up or any videos where I made fried rice will pop up because I usually write out the names of the recipes that I make in the description box so you guys can find things easily but I will try to have the link down below for the video where I made this the fried rice step by step before as I said before we really really liked this beef and broccoli it was very comparable to like something you would get at a Chinese restaurant we loved it definitely make it again but with like that flank steak as I said before and that is going to wrap up this week's What's For Dinner video. Don't forget that this was a collab with my friend Taylor, the Relentless Mommy. Make sure you check out her channel. It will be linked down below. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye.